The squat's probably the most functional movement we have. Um, humans have been squatting forever, ever, and always. We, before we had chairs, we would squat to make our meals. We would squat to poop. Um, we would squat when we were eating. We would squat all the time. Squat when doing anything, basically, on the floor, on the ground level. Um, and as we created chairs, we've stopped squatting. So um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about the squat. The squat, it, just a regular air squat, squat with weight. Um, and what you can do to improve your squat. Because if you can't get into this position with your knees out, stable and strong, and your hips all the way down in between your ankles, then you don't have full functionality as a human. So we want full functionality as humans because that's what it means to be human. It's so fun. Uh, feet just wider than hip distance, okay? And we're always gonna initiate the squat with our hips. So the first muscle group we load is the first muscle group we fire. So if we're up here and we initiate the squat with our knees, we've loaded our quads. And then when we send our hips back, we don't have the butt and the hamstring engagement to be able to stabilize us at the bottom. So we always wanna initiate with hips before knees, hips before knees, hips before knees, okay? So when I go to squat, my feet are just wider than hip distance, my toes are slightly turned out, I'm gonna initiate with my hips. I'm gonna pull down to the bottom, knees go out, hips go all the way down, my chest stays up, and then I'm gonna stand, keeping my pelvis under me, okay? So I'm engaging my glutes to keep my pelvis under me as I stand. I'm not letting my hips come up like this as I stand. There's a time and a place for that, squatting is not it. Um, depending on what I'm doing, will depend what level of tension I'm gonna need. So if I'm just down here making a fire, okay, I don't need a whole lot of tension. I'm just holding my body weight, I'm just hanging out, I don't have any weight. If I am hoping to squat 100 pounds, I'm gonna need a lot more tension, right? So if I've got this 100 pound ball that I'm wanting to squat, hips back and down, I'm gonna have a lot more tension in my system. So how do we create that tension and where does it come from? So when we set our feet, we're gonna spread them, okay? Spread them, maybe externally rotate our feet a little bit into the ground like we're screwing them in, and that's gonna create tension in our hip. I'm gonna squeeze my butt, I'm gonna find it first, okay? Then, as I pull my hips down, I'm continuing to spread the floor with my feet isometrically, and that creates a lot more tension through my hip, so that then when I start to come up, my hip stays under me, all right? If you're somebody who really struggles with breaking parallel, so you start to squat and you get to about here, and then back up and that's all you have, I really, really encourage you to practice every single day. Um, get as far as you can and just hang out. If you can't, I'm gonna move you a little bit. Um, if you can't balance in the bottom of your squat, you know, grab a post of some kind. Maybe it's a railing on the stairs, maybe it's a chair, maybe it's your couch, but just grab it and use it to balance as you pull your hips down and you hang out here at the bottom, okay? I encourage you to try to accumulate five minutes a day. You should be able to hang out in the bottom of your squat for a minimum of five minutes without feeling discomfort. So get down there, hang out in your squat, live there. Um, the way we create new movement in our body and the way we become more mobile and able to have new ranges of motion is stay there. So if you get to here and that's all you got, hang out there, spend time there, fight to get lower, then fight to get your hips closer, fight to get lower, fight to get your hips closer, fight to get lower, fight to get your hips closer until you can be totally upright without holding on, okay? Good luck, have fun.